the title of this book is The Diary of Stecklin Richter, Volume 7. This book may be obtained by searching the shelves in the Great Library and the Arceus House of the Great Karen and the New Continent of Zaya. Hope you guys enjoy. First, a grim morn as the frost slanted early this year. A surprise as it had been late these last three years. I met with Magister Satias, who in discourse conveyed my request to Lord Arceus the Fifteenth to investigate the dark altar further. I retired to Madame Turner's on the great concourse for mutton pie and drank to the health of the new king. With Messrs. Stalia and Fryan, I planned the first visit to the dark altar, due to take place on the morrow with the utmost care due to the reputation it had received. Second, a fair day in regards to the content rather than the weather. The rain did beat down heavily and seemed to only increase as we approached the dark altar. Unperturbed, we continued and felt the better for our persistence the closer we got to the altar. Messrs. Stelia and Fryan proceeded to survey the site as I studied the ancient text found around the altar itself. I feel that even though the text is ancient, I will be able to make progress on understanding it. Third, this morning the rain had turned to snow and seemed to beat down more fiercely than I have known in these past 42 years. I have never known it so treacherous. Nevertheless, we arrived, although weather beaten for our troubles, at the dark altar. As Messrs. Stalia and Fryan continued the survey, I turned my attention to the ancient text carefully, ensuring I was making notes accurately. Some of the forms of the text suggest ideas and thoughts to me which make me believe I shall be able to read this text before long. Fourth, Travelin Salia was taken with a fever the last night. Mr. Freyan and I continued to the dark altar. The weather was no better than the previous day, but mercifully it was no worse. Without Mr. Stalia to help Mr. Fryan do the survey, we both concentrated on ancient text. I found Mr. Fryan's lack of imagination and understanding of ancient language intolerable. How he ever came to work for Magister Satyas, I will never know. I will have to raise his suitability for this task when I speak to him. Progress was slow and I feel I am no further to understanding the ancient text than I was yesterday. Fifth, yet again I must bear the company of Mr. Fryan, as Mr. Stalia has worsened this night. I declare that the progress of this day did not surpass yester. I will have to find other means of engagement for Mr. Fryan. I spent much of the day in conversation with Mr. Fryan, about the meaning of one symbol in particular. His lack of understand of such matters still astounds me and does not to inspire me with regard to his ability. 6. I met upon the mid-noon with Magister Satias, leaving Mr. Fryan at the dark altar with the purpose to find alternative engagement for Mr. Fryan. The audience did not go well, as Magister Satias disagreed with my assessment, and I must tolerate Mr. Fryan further. Upon returning to the dark altar in the mid-afternoon, I discovered Mr. Fryan studying the base. There was much temptation, some might call it provocation, to resolve the issue permanently. I did not. Seventh, the wind continues to blow such a force tainted with biting snow these last seven days. 
I have not known such a tumultuous condition in all my memory. Nevertheless, I was determined to continue my work at the dark altar. However, the king has shut the gates in order to have a good day of thanks for our good health. The fool. I could not do anything, let alone give thanks, as my mind was consumed with my work. If others would, or should I say, could, understand the importance of my work, they would let me pass and continue. Instead, I must console myself with quiet contemplation as I review my work. Eighth, it is with relief that I awoke to the news that both Messrs. Fryan and Stalia both have a fever. Thus, my study of the dark altar can continue undisturbed by the nonsensical murmuring of others. The progress was swift today as the symbols unraveled themselves in my mind. When I present my findings to the magister, he and his peers will see the true message that I bring them. They will see that I was always right and am far superior to them in intellect. I was sore tempted to work through all the night as I feel so close to an epiphany which will uncover the final parts of this endeavor. Ninth, the weather only seems to worsen. That means I should be interrupted less. I continue to grasp the basics of the language. I am seeing, but the message still eludes me. One word keeps appearing in all the text I read. Sacrifice. I do not yet know under what terms the word should be used. I must study further to understand more. I arrived back at my lodgings to the news that Mr. Stallion's condition is improved. I hope he has more intellectual capacity than the Magister and Mr. Fryan. Tenth, what a fool I was to think Mr. Stallion would be any different to the Magister and Mr. Fryan. The complete ignorance and uneducated manner was apparent as soon as I saw him again. His understanding of the language is beyond laughable, and his translation of the symbol as death rather than sacrifice is simply absurd. I do not doubt the Magister has no great understanding of the complication Mr. Stallion will bring to my studies. I shall have to find another use for him. My work slows considerably. Eleventh, today I may have stepped too far over the boundary of what is acceptable. As Mr. Stalia and myself were at the dark altar, I realized that to unlock the rest of the language a sacrifice was needed. It seemed obvious. As the weather worsened through the day, visibility dropped which gave me the opportunity to test my theory. At last, I have found a purpose for Mr. Stalia and Mr. Fryan. I do not regret my actions. There is always a cost to progress. And with that, we've reached the end of this audiobook. It appears to be a diary by Stecklin, and he appears to have possibly gone mad or maybe he was already in the process of going mad before the Dark Altar influenced him. But it seems as if something from the Dark Altar may have possessed him, but maybe it was just his personality. He was kind of a pretentious twat and thought that he was better than everyone who came to assist him, even though his assistants were actually quite qualified in what they were doing, and this whole bit about death and sacrifice, thinking that it was absurd that they have the same meaning, he ended up making it so that those words did have the same meaning, so it seems like his assistants were actually contributing to his project, but he maybe was, like, chosen by the Dark Altar to have that sacrifice committed. I don't know whether the House of Arceus or anyone in Corend did anything to Stuckland legally, because there are laws in Corend and whatnot, 
or if he uncovered the secret of the altar and is doing something now with that. Well, this book's from the past, so I bet Stecklin's long since dead. But it's interesting nonetheless. This was a good lore story about some of the other powers of the Dark Altar and what the Arceus house went through to unlock some of its secrets. And maybe the secrets are still yet to be discovered from it, so there's still definitely room for more lore later, more discovery. Maybe not, though. Maybe JJX wants to keep the Dark Altar mysterious so that it can still be called the Dark Altar, because if everything's known about it, then it's no longer mysterious, no longer dark, etc., etc. So they could be trying to keep an element of mystery to it. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this reading down in the comments below, and I'll see you all tomorrow with another one. Peace, guys.